Okay, one more chat. <laughs> so you are you are the parents of beautiful children. And we have some children coming on the way very soon. <laughs> so God will give you the strength to be a great father and mother. And you, you have a dream for the future. That your child will be obedient. Your child will be very have kindness and, and nice boy, nice girl. You want your child to be a leader. And you want your child to be rich and have a nice job. And uh, Maybe when your child is older, they can pay for you. Everyone has that dream. But then God has a different dream. God has one son, Jesus. A man in heaven forever, eternal in heaven. And the father loves the son. And Jesus loves the Father God. And the Holy Spirit loves. And God is looking down from heaven. God says, I want to save the lost people. And God says, who, who shall I send? Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. So he said, I'll send Jesus Christ. My, the son that I love, he says, my only son, John 3.16. Uh, God gave his only son. Uh, and he loved us to give his son. And he says, son, you go down and you save the people. He says, son, you go down and teach the people. But the people will reject you. The people will kill you. But you forgive them. Son, you go down and die to save the people. Huh? And after you die for the people, the Father God says, I'll raise you from the dead. Huh? And then you'll come back up to the heaven. And when you come back to heaven, you'll be bringing more people with you. And my kingdom will be full of believers. So that's God's dream for Jesus Christ. And that's your dream for your children. Uh, God made us to be like Him. Huh? When God made Adam and Eve, God says, I make men and women in my image. Which means that the character of God is we can have the same character like him. So if God wants to give his child to go save the people, then we can give our children. We, we give our children to God. We say, God, whatever you want our children to do, it's your, you tell them. It's difficult to give your children to God, right? Because you work so hard for your children. The, the woman has to work for nine months. Huh? The, the baby's inside. And the, the woman is having a special diet. Right? When you're pregnant, you have to be very careful, right? Don't take the bad food. Because the bad food can get to the baby. So you, you're working for the baby. And then after nine months, the baby comes out. And then you're serving the baby. Feeding the baby. Cleaning the baby. And you say, I work so hard, I deserve something. 
I want this child to do many things for me. And God says, no, this is the wrong thinking. God says, I gave my child for you. I gave Jesus for you. I gave, you give your child back to me. And that's the story of the Hannah giving Samuel. How many of you know the story of Hannah and Samuel? Yeah, everyone knows the story. And... Uh, the, the priest thought she was crazy. She's praying, God, give me a, a son. Uh, but then finally God answered her prayer. And she gave Samuel up to God. So when God sent Jesus to be a missionary, God only has one son. And his son is a missionary. So Jesus is not a doctor. Jesus is not a lawyer. Jesus is not an engineer. But he did work. He was a carpenter. He was working. So Jesus has skills. He can do many things. But the main job of Jesus, he's a missionary. And Jesus reached you. And he led you to God. So if God's son is a missionary, your child can be a missionary. It's the dream of God. And now it's your dream. Huh? Think about your children. Or if you don't have children, think about your future children. I want my child to do this, do this, do this. Hmm? So just say in your heart, I want my child to be a missionary. Uh, and when we meet the little children, and they're running around playing, we say, what do you want to do when you grow old? Not many, they don't say I want to be a missionary. They say, oh, I want to be a, a businessman. What do they say? I want to be a, a doctor. I want to be a, a policeman. I want to stop the traffic. I want to be a soldier in the army. Yeah. Or maybe they say, I want to go outside Nepal, I want to go to India, somewhere. So they have many dreams. And I stopped the child. I said, do you know Jesus? He was a missionary. I said, do you love Jesus? So the child said, oh yeah, I love Jesus. So I said, why don't you, why don't you want to be like the same like Jesus maybe? Oh, oh yeah. Then the child says, I never thought about it. Jesus is a missionary. So I'll be a missionary. But see, sometimes the little children, they're watching. And they see many of us were missionaries today. And they watch the missionary. And maybe the missionary is complaining, I don't have enough money. And so the child says, oh, I don't think I want to be a missionary. Even, even the missionaries I see, they're always complaining. So, so let us not complain. To be a missionary means you're going to be poor all of your life. Now, God provided many needs for me and Bethany to have money. But see, you don't know that we give away most of our money that comes, we just give it away. Huh? But we don't tell people how much we give. But we, we give everything. Maybe God God gives it because He knows we're going to give it. So, when you're a missionary, you always be poor. So the, the children think, I don't want to do that. That's why we have to teach the children. But all of Nepal is lost in going to hell. Huh? 
All the world is going to hell. They're sinners that don't know Jesus. And how can they hear about Jesus? Someone has to go and preach Jesus. So we teach the children when they're five years old. There's lost sinners over there. And do you know when they die, they go to the hell? But Jesus will save them from hell. But they don't know about Jesus. So we say to the little five-year-old boy, do you want to help them to know about Jesus? He says, oh yeah, I want to help them. I don't want them to go to hell. Huh? Because they're a little child. They understand and the simple things. But when they get older, 10 years old, 12 years old, then you say, hey, do you want to be a missionary? And they, they forget everything. When they're 5 years old, they love Jesus. But then when they're 12 years old, they're just worried about uh, their exams. And we put so much pressure on the children. Exam, exam, exam. Study, study, study. Huh? And so they only think about one thing. Huh? School work, homework. And so we go we go home and talk to the children. Did you study your homework? Did you do your exam? And they say, Oh yes, father, yes, father. And you say, Okay, good, you're a good boy. Let's have food. And then we're not asking a question. Did you read the Bible today? Did you pray to Jesus today? We don't ask that. Because it's more important to study for the exam. So it's easy to forget that our children, we're giving our children to God. So have you given your children to God? Even your, your older children. Some of you have children, they already graduated. And maybe you might be disappointed in something they do. But still, you can call them and remind them, hey, God wants you to be a missionary. Oh, I don't want to be a missionary. So, oh, don't you remember people are going to hell without Jesus? They say, yeah, I remember learning about that when I was a little child. Do you care about it? Hey, my child. I love you. And God loves all people. But they don't, the people don't know about God. So please go be a missionary. Huh? So to be a missionary, you don't have to travel. All over Kathmandu, people need Jesus. Huh? So when I was a teenager, a young person, I, I was a lost sinner, I don't know Jesus. And there were Christians that came to my school. And they started a prayer meeting. And the teachers were not allowed to come to the prayer. Because in America, the government is atheist. There's a rule in, in the government of America. The, the workers for the government cannot talk about God. Yeah. That's an evil rule. America was founded by the Christian people. But if you work for the government of America, they say, while you're working, you can never talk about God. Because there's a separation of God in America. They don't believe. That's why America is going down, down, down. They have money, but the nation is being destroyed. 
because they're rejecting God. I was in the government school and I had a Christian teacher but he never talked about God. He was afraid. He, maybe the, the government will fire his job. So the, my fellow students, they told me about God. And I came to their prayer meeting at 7 o'clock in the morning. They prayed for 30 minutes every, every day before school. And at 7.30 school starts. So I received Jesus and I changed. And I, I prayed with the Christian students. Uh, and we asked one teacher, can we use your schoolroom? We're going to pray in your room. And the teacher says, yes, you can have, but I, I cannot come. It's against, the American law is against it. So only the youth is going for prayer. And Jesus changed me because of the youth who have boldness for Jesus. I was 16 years old and they said you're going to hell because you're rejecting Jesus if you die in a car accident you'll go to the hell I said How? you cannot talk to me like that I never heard about Jesus before so I said I'm 16 years old how I can go to hell I was thinking uh, as a child like mine hell is for the old people <laughs> but all the young people go to the heaven <laughs> now it's true that if a little baby dies the baby goes to heaven because the baby doesn't know evil and good doesn't know these things so the blood of Jesus covers all the babies but there's a time in a child's life where they know evil and good what, what age is that? I don't know it, it's different for every child Huh? Some children, uh, they understand evil and good even at four years old. Some children, they don't understand until they're six years old. But then when they understand it, and they, they know that they are sinning also, and then if the child rejects God, if, if they die when they're 10 years old or 11 years old and they take a choice do they want to receive Jesus or reject Jesus so even a child who's 10 years old can reject Jesus if they reject Jesus they have to go to the hell it's a choice so when we're raising our children in the church what when do they become born again believers uh, they take a choice we have to help them understand they pray dear Jesus I'm a sinner I believe you died on the cross for me Jesus please forgive me Jesus and they, they're choosing to pray we're not forcing them uh, sometimes children pray only because the, to make father and mother happy and when they get older they, they don't want to go to the church because they were only going to church to make father and mother happy so you have to test your children heart look at them in the face huh? speak to them closely <laughs> not far away <laughs> don't say hey child <laughs> you do a good thing <laughs> you take Jesus <laughs> no, don't preach like that <laughs> a child needs 
closeness, closeness. Kindness. Good communication. Oh my child. I care so much about you. You understand what you're learning in church? What do you think about it? Is it really true? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, do you say that to make me happy? Are you saying it to God? Even if you don't believe, I still love you. So don't believe to prove to me. But face God. Tell God what you believe. If, if I say, pray this prayer. Dear God, uh, I believe in you. So it may be a mistake. Because I'm I'm giving them the words. But it's not their words. It's, it's coming from my heart. But it's not coming from their heart. So I give them a prayer. And they pray. To make me happy. But it's not coming from their heart. So I get in the face and talk nicely. I want to help you understand. The Bible is real. It's true. You read it yourself. The Holy Spirit will teach you. Even, even when I'm not with you, leave the Bible alone. God's with you. Even when father and mother are not with you, God's with you. And you can read the Bible and God will speak to you. And after you read the Bible, look up to heaven and say, God, I want to talk to you. Uh, I'm a sinner. And I want to pray, please forgive me, and I want to give you my heart. Huh? The, so we tell our children to pray. Say, read the Bible, and you pray to God. What should I pray? pray? Pray anything that's in your heart. Huh? So they'll pray for the, the little dog with the, the, the baby dogs. <laughs> like we have the little dogs near the church now, right? <laughs> so every day the children pray for the dog. <laughs> children pray for their school. <laughs> they pray for the food. <laughs> And uh, they pray that they, that they will get nice toys. And then that's it. They finish their prayer. And then you're listening to them pray. It's like, oh, they don't understand. <laughs> it's about Jesus. It's not about all the things. So you... Again, you teach them again. This is the gospel of Jesus. Uh, we're all sinners. Even I, your father is a sinner. And I need Jesus. You need Jesus. So, you pray. Ask Jesus to forgive you. Ask Jesus to save you from the hell. My child, I don't want you to go to hell. And then they start praying. And it, it comes from their heart. Oh, Jesus, I want you. I need you to save me from sins. So then, then they're truly born again. Because they, it's their choice. It's not their parents forcing them. Because most people say, I'm a Christian because my father is a Christian. Same with the Hindu. Hindu say I'm a Hindu because my father is a Hindu. But Christian is different. It's a choice. I had to be born again. Huh? It happened when I was 16 years old. So after I got born again in Jesus, I met the teachers in my school. I said, you were a Christian, but you never told me about Jesus. Yeah, they said, oh, I'm sorry. I, I was afraid the government would take my job away. I said, 
That's not a good reason. I was going to the hell and you never warned me or tried to help me come to Jesus. But I forgave the teacher because he's like a baby Christian. Huh? And so uh, I invited the teacher, come to the prayer meeting. I said, no, teacher's not allowed there. So he never came to the prayer. But all the students were praying. So in one year, we saw 30 students in my school come to Jesus. Huh? With no help from the uh, big adults. The youth were moving for God. So I learned my the purpose for my life. I was a missionary to my school and then to all the world. And after I graduated, I heard God speak to me. Go to India. And I began to pray for India. I went to Bible college. Huh? And then they sent the church sent me to India. And I was helping Pastor Carl Silva. And Pastor Carl Silva said, let's go to Nepal. So I took the train. The Gorakhpur Express. Two days from Mumbai to Gorakhpur. And I, I was smelling very bad. And uh, and then we took a, a, a van through the border of Nepal. And so finally we reached Kathmandu the first time. This is 15 years ago now. We met Pastor Rajan. Ananta was there. And little, uh, Subhas was like a little boy. Huh? Subhas, Subhan, and Suraj. Subhas, Subhan, and Suraj. Huh? And I saw some some of you were there. And many of you, your new faces, you've come after that. And so we saw the church grow. And that's when I met Bethany. The first, first time to Nepal. I was smelling very bad. But she was smelling very nice. <laughs> And so, when I carried her bag, I was hoping she would walk with me and talk with me. Uh, we can become the friends. But she said, oh, thank you for taking my bag. Oh, bye-bye. And she, she walked to the hotel. And I was, I was going slowly. Oh, I wanted to talk to me, but she's not talking to me. Huh? So, the next day, I tried to talk to her again the next day. Pastor Rajan came with a van. And we were sitting in the van. And I, I, say, I said, this seat next to me, is, I'm safe for Bethany. So, pa Pastor Carl was looking at me. Pastor Carl said, oh, you like that girl, huh? So then, Bethany came to the van. And I'm like, I'm showing her the seat, you know. And Bethany says, uh, Doug, can you change seats with him? I want to sit with him, my friend. <laughs> oh no. Two, two times I didn't it didn't work. Huh? <laughs> Because we're, we're, we're just newly coming to know each other, you know. She, she doesn't know I like her. Huh? So, so then we, we went to visit houses of the church members. And it was, dark, it was uh, in the evening dark. So she was uh, walking to the house. 
and she fell down. And then I picked her up. And then she she looked into my eyes. <laughs> so she remembered me. And we became close friends. I mean, God put us together. And now we're best friends. Huh? Like you're best friends with your wife and, and husband. And see, when we start the church in Mumbai, we started a church in Cambodia. These are our spiritual children. Huh? So we want more spiritual children. So now we're returning to Mumbai to live there. And we'll, we'll be helping Pastor Binu. Because Pastor Binu is a very good choice to be the new pastor. He's the most humble one. He's a servant. Huh? So I'm so happy that he was the choice for the new pastor. So Beth and I will help him. And if we live in Mumbai, we can come back to Nepal many times. And we can help you uh, raise your children. We love to see your children in the church. We like to see your children running around. Yeah. You have beautiful children. You know, sometimes they may be fighting. But it's okay, we teach them not to fight. But what will be the future of your children? Bethany and I will return, we'll come back many times. We'll say, how's your children doing? Oh, I'm having such problems with my children. It's okay. Forgive them. Give them second chance, third chance. Uh, show them to be a missionary. Uh, you say, oh, pastor, pray for me. My child is failing the exams. They're not studying. Oh, it's okay. But they can be a missionary. Do they read the Bible? Do they pray? Do they share the gospel with the lost sinners? But that's all they need. Even if they fail their exam, they never find a good job. They don't need the money. They need to be a missionary. So Beth and I will visit. And say, how are the children doing? Last week my child told someone about Jesus. And then they started getting into a fight. <laughs> oh, okay. But they're doing some good, but not... Sometimes they're making mistakes. But if they're telling people about Jesus, it means their heart is focused in the right place. Uh, oh, my child's not studying the textbook for the school. But the child loves the Bible. It's, it's better they just study the Bible all the time. <laughs> this happened to me. That in American school, uh, I, I failed many exams. <laughs> huh? I mean, uh, I, I never went to the college. I finished the 12th standard. That's it. And then I went to Bible college. Huh? So when I when I live in America, sometimes my father said, well, you're, you're good for nothing, you're not making money. Because my father doesn't believe in Jesus. You know what job I'm working in America? Taxi driver. I love the taxi drivers. I, when, I, when I speak to them here in Nepal, I, always, I tell them about Jesus. And I say, I'm an American taxi driver. Huh? I don't need education for that. <laughs> Uh, and when I'm in India, I say I'm a rickshaw driver. Uh, they, go, oh, you, they say, you have a rickshaw in America? I go, no, it's, it's a big rickshaw. <laughs> but uh, I, I always give the taxi driver and the rickshaw driver more money. 
If the if the meter bill is saying you know 500 rupees, I give 600, 700. Oh, you're giving more. Thank you, thank you. I remember when I was a taxi driver, I liked it when people gave me extra money. So when, when I'm in America and I'm a taxi driver, my my father in America, I think, oh, what shame! He's not making much money. Why, why is that going to university? He's studying the Bible every day. And I was a I was a youth pastor. I was a pastor of the youth. So I would, all the youth come together and I would teach them the Bible. But no one paid me for that. Volunteer for free. You want your children to think like that. So when your child becomes 12, 13, you say, Hey child, how can you teach the younger children? And they say, Okay, I'll do it, but how much will you pay me? You volunteer for free. Serve the people for love, not for money. So maybe your children in the future will be missionaries. But how will they make money? They have no good education, it's not good. That your children can be taxi drivers also. Huh? Or maybe your children can be a carpenter. You don't need education for that. Just working with the hands, making the furniture. Huh? Jesus did that, right? Huh? So why your children cannot do that? Oh, I want my child to have high education. My child's going to have a rich job. My, my child's going to go to Kuwait. My child's going to Dubai. My child's going to Malaysia. And they're going to send me money. <laughs> no, that's not the plan. Give your children to God. So in 1 Samuel, chapter 3, let's read 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through uh, eight. <laughs> तब परम प्रभुले सामुएलले बोलाउनु भयो अनि तिनीले जवाफ दिए म यहाँ छु अनि तिमी यदि कहाँ त गएर भने म यहाँ छु किनकि तपाईले मलाई बोलाउनु भयो अनि उनले भने मैले त बोलाइन फेरि सुत तब तिनी गएर ढल्के अनि परम प्रभुले फेरि बोलाउनु भयो सामुएल अनि सामुएल उठेर यदि कहाँ गएर भने म यहाँ छु किनकि तपाईले मलाई बोलाउनु भयो अनि उनले जवाफ दिए मैले बोलाइन मेरो छोरो फेरि सुत अनि सामुएलले अझसम्म परम प्रभुले चिनेका थिएन न त अझसम्म परम प्रभुको वचन नै तिनी कहाँ प्रकट भएको थियो अनि परम प्रभुले सामुएलले त्यसरी so we, we want our children to hear God's voice. But they, they hear God's voice, but then they come ask us a question. So this priest, his name is Eli. Actually, he was not walking with God. But he, at least he cared for Samuel. So, uh, it took three times to understand that God was calling him. Huh? So, God is calling your children. And you can help them to hear God's voice. They will come and ask questions to you. But you are not God. You have to say, don't come to me, go to God. I don't know the answer. But the Bible has the answer. Huh? It's difficult for a father to say to the children, I don't know the answer. 
A father wants the children to think he's the most wise man on all the earth. So children come to the father. Daddy, why this and what about that? What does this mean? And the father says, I don't know. They, they feel shame. My children would think I don't have wisdom. But say, I don't know, but the Bible knows. So don't listen to my voice, listen to God's voice. Huh? That's a good way to raise your children. You're, you're not raising them to belong to you, you're raising them to belong to God. They, they know your voice. And they know their mother's voice. They don't know the God's voice. So you tell the children. Pray quietly and read the Bible and listen for Jesus' voice. Tell your children Jesus' voice is more important than your parents' voice. Tell your children the Bible says obey your parents. So you have to do anything your parents say. But there's a high authority above the parents that's Jesus so listen to that voice and then when the children become 12 years old 13 years old and they they, uh, they hear your voice they say Oh, Jesus told me the same thing. When you tell them something good, they'll say, they'll say, oh, thank you because Jesus told me, now you're telling me the same thing. Not because they have a relationship with Jesus, even, even when you're not there. Huh? So do your children have a relationship with Jesus? When they're outside of the church and when they're uh, alone away from you if they're, if they're having some food do the children stop each other hey you didn't pray before you had the food <laughs> so yeah we, we only pray because mother and father tell us to pray and mother and father are not here right now so let's just eat the food we don't need to pray so God is with us even when our parents are not with us so let's give honor to God uh, the child is thinking like this because you taught them to think like that uh, are you teaching your children to pray like that uh, and read the Bible in the home this is how to raise the children but this is the big, big biggest question when your children do the sin and they're doing wrong, how to discipline them? How, how does the normal Nepali home discipline the children? Huh? Sometimes I, I see, like I'm, I'm looking at different families. When I'm, I'm walking around Pepsi Cola, I see two different ways. I see some families they let their children do anything and there's no discipline. Mother and father don't know what the children are doing. They don't care about it. They oh no, the mother and father don't know the love of Jesus. Because Jesus would uh, motivate their hearts to, to know about their children's activity to be around them to protect the children from the danger uh, but then I see other families uh, yelling at their children beating their children uh, uh, 
with no love, but just with anger, you know. But then after the anger is finished, then they go home, they feed their children, and they, they, say, they say they love their children. So, so there is a love relationship, but, but the way that they're disciplining is only in anger. Huh? And even the Bible says, discipline your children. It's in Proverbs, chapter 13. Oh, wait. I missed it. Oh, here it is. I got the wrong chapter. Here it's chapter 19. Proverbs 19. Pradesh. Oh, I remember the Ito Pradesh. Not Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh. Not Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh. Ah, Ito Pradesh. Ito Pradesh. Yeah. Okay. Chapter 19, verse uh, 18. Ah, so the child is crying but you're giving the discipline even the Bible says you can take a stick or a rod and give the discipline like that but not in anger but you're teaching in love so when your child does a bad thing Go, uh, cal calm your emotions down because you're looking at the child and you want to yell and scream so, so first calm yourself down and put your hand on the child and say you're doing the wrong thing but first I want to know I love you first. And I want to teach you that you're doing the wrong thing. I have to discipline you. But it's not in anger, but in love. Huh? So then you, there's a peaceful relationship. Huh? See, some children, they run away from the parents because they know their parents will not forgive them. And they, they know their parents will just yell and scream. So they, they just run away. But if we if we love our children and we're speaking with a, a strong voice, I will not tolerate your evil things you're doing. But um, I'm not speaking in a yelling anger. You say the Bible says don't sin like that. And uh, now when they're when they're young, when they're three, four, five years old, you can take a stick like a rod. And if you hit them not hardly, but just hit them to teach them a lesson. Now, now God designed the body. God made a special place that's very soft. Huh? It's right here, see? It's very soft. So, you speak to your child. Uh, I don't want to hit you. But I have to teach you you're doing very bad. So, one. Two. See, it, it doesn't hurt too much. But it, it hurts their pride. Uh, it's like, uh, huh? But you're just teaching them. It's wrong. Huh? Don't, don't hit them in the face. Don't hit them in the arm. Hit them in a soft place. <laughs> not, not with anger. Don't, don't leave any wound or marking. Just to, in their mind, they remember. Oh, I did a bad thing. And my father and mother, they're not happy with me. I, I, need, to repent. I need to repent of my sins. Huh? So, uh, but when, they, when the children become 10 and 12, then, 
They're too old. Like you cannot use that stick to hit them anymore. They're too old. So there's new ways to give discipline. Like take away the phone. No more phone. Uh, no more games. No more playing. Uh, they have to sit alone. Uh, and they have to pray. And they have to miss something that all their friends are doing and they miss it. Uh, and they will, oh, I did a wrong thing. And I got the consequences for my sins. Uh, so you, you can do that for your children. Say, I'm sorry, child, I have to discipline you. But I have to so that you will learn your lesson. Please don't think I'm angry at you. But I'm teaching you how to improve and repent. Can, can you have a relationship with your children like that? The book of Proverbs is saying that. How to discipline the children. But, you know, if I, after your children grow up, you can do a good job to raise them you can be a good father and a good mother but still they may choose the wrong way and not serve God they have a free will a free choice we cannot force them but if we put the word of God inside of them and they, and they stop going to church and they're 20 years old 22 years old and they don't serve God anymore they'll remember and God will bring them back huh? when they're 30 years old when they're 35 years old they'll say you know my mother and father taught me about Jesus I need to go back so if you have children that are not serving God and you're, and you're sad crying don't stop hoping keep hoping your children will come back to God because they have the Bibles deep inside of them and just like a plant that when that seed goes down it takes time to come up you know the, there's one tree called a bamboo tree yeah, have you ever heard of this bamboo tree before? It takes a long time for that tree to come up. Uh, you plant the seed, sometimes 10 years, 13 years, nothing's coming. It's going deep, deep in the ground. And then after 10 years, it's like, zoop! And it, it goes every direction. Huh? So maybe your children be like that. You're planting the Bible in your children. And you don't see, they're, they're not living a good life. Uh, but maybe they will change in 10 years. So keep trying more and more. Don't, don't cut them off saying, oh, I'm not calling you anymore. Keep calling them. I know you're not in the church, but I still love you. And God still has a call on your life. And one day maybe God will call you to come back. And, and we will receive you with welcome. Uh, our hearts are full of love for those who are uh, not coming to church. Uh, don't put shame on them. And say, you're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, this is how we raise our children. Not with shame. Uh, if we look at our children, shame. Oh, they, they will never be happy. Always my parents are shaming me, shaming me. Sh shame is a powerful emotion. Some people, they, they take shame as their number one uh, thought in their minds. They say, uh, you know, maybe I can never go back to church. Because, you know, I'm so ashamed and my parents are ashamed and even the church people are ashamed of me. Huh? 
maybe I cannot go back. Because when you when when young people do bad things, shame be, is like a it's, it's like a, a clothing covering. The clothing is covering them. And in their mind, only thinking about shame. But if we call them on the phone, or we meet them face to face, say, yes, you did the wrong thing. But God forgives. Jesus died on the cross. Not to shame you, but to love you. And to show you a second chance, third chance. So don't take shame. Repent. Turn back to God. We will welcome you. We will not remind you of your sin. We, we see someone who stops going to the church. And then they start walking on this, the road. Oh, there's that one. They used to come to church. Uh oh, they're not coming. Shame. No, don't think like that. Think, oh, I remember them. We miss you. We love you. We're praying for you. God has a plan for you. Hey. Welcome to come back. I said, oh, I'm not ready. You're not ready? Okay, we'll pray for you. Uh, and one day, maybe you come back. Uh, just smile. They, you see how a smile changes everything, no? Uh, how many of you husbands, you smile at your wife? Uh, wife, make the food. <laughs> Say, uh, sweetheart, can you please make food for me? I'm hungry. Huh? And when the husband comes home, what does the wife do? Oh, husband! Buddha, <laughs> <laughs> Buddha. Oh, I am your buddy. Not your buddy. <laughs> Priya Tom Priya C. Priya Tom Priya C. Huh? So have that smile. When you when you see your children. Huh? Don't frown at all oh, you children. All, all day I clean for you. All day I cook for you. And look, you're playing games, you're doing nothing. And the, the children learn not. Oh, smiling is. Mother never smiles, so I never smile. Yeah, yeah. So start smiling. Even when your children are doing something wrong. Oh my child. I, you're doing the wrong thing. But I'm still happy. I'm not happy with you. I'm happy with God. And you better come to God. Come with me. Let me teach you. You take them like this. <laughs> you can like tell jokes to your children. Like oh. If you keep doing this bad thing, I don't know, maybe you start getting pimples on your face. <laughs> Just joke with them. You know? Get the children to laugh. At the same time, rebuking them and correcting them. Because laughter is a medicine, right? Huh? If, if, uh, if someone does something wrong and they feel shame, uh, get them to laugh. Say, you know, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus knows you're a sinner. And Jesus wants to forgive you. I just laugh about it. Because I have the victory. You know, when, when you're on the winning team in the, the sports, you, you cheer a victory. Huh? So you have the victory in Jesus. Even when your children are doing bad things. So you show your children you're happy. 
And you want to bring children back to God. And you can laugh in the home. It's a good medicine. Sometimes when Bethany laughs, she has a very loud laugh. And I'll see Bethany talking to someone. And Bethany goes, <laughs> you know? And I think, what, what is Bethany laughing about? But I start laughing. Because I see her laughing. I don't know why we're laughing. <laughs> so God is laughing. And we hear God's voice. God says, I had the victory. <laughs> oh God, but Satan is fighting us. Satan is hurting so many people. God says, oh, oh, I had the victory. Oh, oh. Oh, and Satan is like that little bug flying around. And God says, ho, 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 ho. Like, Satan's nothing. So when we hear God laughing, then we start laughing. It's a medicine for us. Then our children start laughing. And the children say, why are we laughing? Because God has victory over Satan. I'm like, oh, that's good, that's good. Mommy, that you mean we're the winner, we're not the loser? Because when I go to my school, my, the students say, you loser, loser. So father and mother say, no. When you go to school, tell all the students, you're a winner. Tell them how you're a winner because Jesus got victory over Satan. So laugh. People say, oh, you're a loser, loser. No, I'm a winner. My team, is Jesus Christ is my captain. And we are the winner. Satan is the loser. So I cannot lose. Huh? When Jesus is my captain, it's impossible for me to lose. Even if I make a mistake, I'm on the winning team. Huh? I cannot lose. Huh? So our children can learn this boldness. It, it will motivate them to be a missionary for Jesus. And your children are watching you. And see, mother and father are speaking about Jesus to people. Mother and father are missionary, I will be a missionary. So start a prayer meeting in your home. Open the Bible in your home and make your home a missionary place. Invite your neighbors to come to the home and read, read Bible stories to them. Maybe they, they don't understand it. Uh, maybe they will not become Christian. Maybe for six months they're coming to your home. And after six months then they become a Christian. But you're, you're not making it like, oh, I'm better than you. No. So your children are watching you. And you're praying in the home. You're reading the Bible in the home. And then they get desi desire to do the same thing. And then some of you can take a trip and go preach Jesus in other places than Nepal. And the children will, will see, oh, mother and father are traveling to preach Jesus. So I can do the same thing. Huh? There are many places in Nepal that don't know Jesus. And we, we have our young MTC students, the boys. Uh, so sometimes we think, only the MTC students and Pastor Rajan and Pastor Ganesh, they go do the missions. But can I do that also? Yeah, it's your job also. You can travel on a trip. Go to the next village outside the city. Even if Pastor Rajan can't go, 
You can invite, you can say, you can join Pastor Rajan. Or he says, I'm busy, I'm doing another mission. But, but you still, you can go even if the pastor is not with you. Because you're just preaching the gospel. And maybe one person will believe in Jesus. The whole village will reject it. But one person will receive Jesus. Huh? Because you, a normal person, a normal Nepali person, you took a special trip, some village in Dolaka, Uttradunga, <laughs> and then Jesus used you to touch people. Huh? So, and then your children will watch you. And they say, oh, this is the purpose of life. Not to do something in the world. Ah. So this is a good message, no? I mean, mo most messages about children is like about how to get a good education. So this is a different message. Raise your children to be missionaries. Huh? Because people are going to hell. Forever eternal, eternal hell. They need to be saved. Jesus will save them. But he has to use you to go preach it. So all of you are missionaries. Husband and wife together. And your children are missionaries. So let's pray for that. And God will give us that power. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Make, make us a missionary today. Help us to raise our children. Teach us how to discipline our children when they do the wrong. Teach the children to be missionaries. We pray for the Hope family children in the hostel. We pray we raise all the Hope family children to be missionaries. We pray for their education. That they have quality education. But then most important they would learn the Bible. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. महत्वपूर्ण <laughs> ठुला <laughs> जून को रचे बास्तरी ताऊ आज पास्ते बाव ने कुला बनाऊंगे कोई लेकर ये था सर तब ये तब ये तो छोरा छोरे लाए सफल बनाऊंगे सहान उनसे और सफल हुनसर बनी अल्लाह परमेश्वर के बाद छोड़े हुए कुछ कष्ट वाला विचार करना चाहिए परमेश्वर को बाद छोड़े ना और कोई लेकर ये बनाऊंगा मेरे पाऊ तो बीवी को मान जाए तो डायवर कर नहीं तो प्रार्थना करने वाले खाने कोस्टो कोस्टो चोट लाल लगा दबाना लाये तब ये तो माला विचार करना चाहिए मैं सोच रहा हूँ हम लोग सोचा सोचे थे मेरे को भी आपको जानने में मालूम होने में आता है इसका नाम है लाइस सही किसी में आने से काम सफल होने रुकाव में सफल होने से हम शफल हुआ हम आओ पहले बने पहले आज खुले बने पास्टर को घर में अभिया को घर में अरे अरे विश्वासी है को घर में बने मेरे खुला खुला महान पास्टर साथी है छोरा छोरा 
तब जो भी जाना छोड़ा छोड़ी चाहे बाइबल छोड़ी मानी चार्ज मारो ना फ्री में हम इसमें बाइबल से शानो बाइबल से फ्री में ले जाना उस फैसला ही बनो इसके अरे पुर्तियाँ वो तुम दिलाओ तुम ये ये करते हैं बाइबल पढ़ा प्रार्थना करो बनो सही आंटे इसमें चलो सही होगा कि आप ही करो था जा अबे तो बंद कर देंगे क्योंकि बाइबल पढ़े बाबू बाइबल पढ़े तो पढ़े नहीं सच्चे बाइबल पढ़े होने से हम ये 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 तो लोग उधर आपको बताओ अरे भाई को अरे पास्टर अरे भाई को सासू आमा से अरे बंद करो बंद करो हम पढ़ा को मानी मानी है तो हम आते हैं ना वो सासू मेरे में नहीं है ना पढ़ा को मानी जब ये मेरे हॉस्पिटल में जाने वाले हैं ऐसा अरे हॉस्पिटल डॉक्टर ले जाएं ये तो कुछ ऐसे बताएं जो हैं तो ये तब तो अरे ये जो 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 तो ये वहाँ को रोक चाहिए मोटो सब में दिलो रोक रहे हो और बनी सांग तो ये करा है चाहे तो हो तो फिर साची की कृषि नहीं तो जो बाहर ही बहुत बार नहीं सल्ला आदेश हो रहा था बहुत बार तो सल्ला तो कृषि नहीं बनी होगी तो जो बाहर ही बहुत बार वाह इसका ले अने 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 आमा दाहो अने बुआ बुआ अने बाबू पर तो जान देना मतलब पंच ने कह चुका अने पर पर नहीं जान देना अने संग सुनने बाबू पर ही चल तब तो कोई बाइन होता है ना कि अन्य दिन तो इसका सुनने बाइन बस पढ़ना उसको आर्म लगा के पढ़ना जो सुनने में पढ़ने हो रही है ना तो इसका हम लोग बच्चा बच्चा बाल बच्चा ने कहीं बाइन बस सुनने बाइन बस पढ़ने का पढ़ने उसको तो नहीं आ रहा है ना हमें शौकल भी आना होता है अमें शिया क्या है ना इस